exactly is a paint inlay, you might ask? Paint inlays are a premium art product developed by Iron Orchid Designs. They are not a transfer, and they're not decoupage. When you use a paint inlay, you're embedding artist quality paint into the surface of your project. They're not intended to be perfect, but organic in nature, giving you a visually interesting, textured, and often distressed result. In this video, I'll show you how I use the Morocco paint inlay on a $10 thrifted bench to take it from blah to fabulous. My name is BJ, my business is called Junked Up, and let's get started. Inside your package, you'll find multiple loose sheets. For an inlay such as this one, matching up the pattern is pretty easy. Some of the inlays are a little bit more involved, but the grid lines on the back should help. And it's always best to do a dry fit so you know where each sheet goes before you commit to putting it down in your paint. You'll need to trim that little bit of paper on the end where there is no design to get your pattern to match up. We're going to embed the paint that is on the sheet into wet paint. I've already given my project a coat of paint, in this case DIY White Swan, and let it dry. I'm giving it a second coat, and then while the paint is still wet, I lay down the sheet paint side down. It's important to give your project a good coat of paint. Don't be stingy. Gently push down on the paint inlay, making sure that it makes good contact with your wet paint. And then I take a damp cloth and just go over the whole sheet, just making sure that the paint inlay is making good contact with my project. Now it's time to repeat the process on the other side of my project. First laying down a good coat of the DIY paint in White Swan, then laying down the paint inlay, making sure that the edges of the inlay match up so that the pattern is continuous. And then once I have the inlay laid down, going over it with a damp cloth. After I'm finished going over my piece with the damp cloth, it is time to set my project aside and let it dry. Dry times are going to be dependent on what kind of paint you use and what kind of conditions your project is in. Mine was in an air conditioned room and it probably took about maybe 45 minutes for it to dry. Once your project is dry, it is time to remove the carrier sheet, leaving the inlay embedded in your project. So the first thing you wanna do is lightly mist the back of the sheet. This makes it easy to pull the sheet off. There's no need to soak your project, just a nice, light, gentle misting will do. And you'll know when you need to add more water because when you start pulling on the sheet, it should release pretty easily. If it doesn't and it feels stuck, just give it another little light spray of water. Make sure you go slow and steady and carefully remove that carrier sheet because you can set it aside, let it dry, and then use it again for another project and you'll get a somewhat fainter impression, but it will still work. Part of the learning curve with the paint inlays is understanding that the paint can be reactivated until it is sealed. This means you need either a spray sealer or a fixative to seal in the paint inlay before adding a top coat. I used an artist's spray varnish because that's what I had on hand. I then sealed my project with two coats of DIY paint big top, making sure it was dry in between coats. Mm -hmm. 
I decided I wanted to age my project, so I'm going to use DIY Paint Liquid Patina Dark and Decrepit. I'm going to use the Dark and Decrepit like I would use a glaze, meaning I'm going to apply it and then wipe it off with a damp cloth. The key to using the Dark and Decrepit is to make sure that your paint is sealed first, which is why I sealed it with the DIY Paint Big Top, because otherwise you're just staining your paint and it's not gonna look the way you want it to look. You can wipe off as much or as little as you want. I kind of go over it until I get the look that I like. And you can see in all of the nooks and the crannies, that's where the glaze accumulates and stays and gives a nice aged effect. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I put pictures of some additional paint inlays in there. Okay, so right about now, I know you're thinking, holy cow, she just totally ruined her project. She had this beautiful paint inlay going and she ruined it. I didn't ruin it. Remember we had those two coats of Big Top? That's why we had those two coats of Big Top, because it allows me to go ahead and wipe off the dark and decrepit. I know it looks really scary, but you just have to trust the process. For any of the products used in today's video, go find your local retailer for either DIY paint or IOT. If you don't have a local retailer, you can click on the link in the description box below and it'll take you to my website and you can find everything you need. The Dark and Decrepit Liquid Patina did a really nice job of just knocking back the brightness of that white and kind of bringing the whole design together and giving it just a little bit of age. I do wanna point out the difference. If you look on the left side of your screen, that is with the liquid patina, and on the right side is no liquid patina. It can be intimidating to use new products, especially when it's a brand new technology on the market and unlike anything you've ever used before. I get that, but I do hope you decide to give paint inlays a try. Drop your questions in the comments below and I'm happy to help. There is always a learning curve, so remember to give yourself some grace and forgiveness when trying something new. That advice goes for anything in life, really, not just trying the new paint inlays. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!